What's up, guys? Um, how's it going? I'm Charlie Cox from Daredevil. Um, and I've been given some um, some questions here to answer. So I'm going to just um, kick these off right away. This is from uh, Jonah K, who says, uh, This season is so much darker than others. How did you prepare yourself to take on all of Matt's anger and pain and execute it so well? Thank you. Uh, what was your favorite fight se sequence from season three? Um, okay. A season so much darker than this. How much you prepare yourself to take on? Um, you know, I, that's a really good question. I guess you kind of, um, you, well, I'm, I'm Catholic and Matt's Catholic. So I got all that kind of original sin thing going on that I kind of know a little bit about. Um, uh, you know, I, I, I guess Matt has had a lot of, um, he's dealt with a lot of physical, emotional, mental pain through the course of the, the last four years. So I've kind of got used to that and, and better at it. Um, this season three, for people who have seen it, seen the beginning at least, it is, it is, um, it kind of doubles down on that. So we see Matt at a, a rock bottom in a way that we haven't quite seen him before. Um, and what was really fun about this season was that, you know, he's so emotionally broken. He's so kind of spiritually rock bottom that it, it, initially, at least, it leads him down a path that is that is very different for a superhero. It's very it's very dark, as you say. And and kind of um, for a minute there, we, we see him grappling with with um, fundamental questions that we haven't really seen him have in the past. Um, but that was really fun. Um, I think my favorite fight sequence uh, was is the prison hallway fight in uh, in episode four, um, the uh, the one shot that we did, which was um, incredibly challenging and exciting. Um, we had to take a full day out of shooting just to rehearse it, which is very unusual. Um, and then we took another day just to film it. Um, and uh, I'm amazed that we managed to pull it off because it was. Uh, a, a huge feat, um, but that's 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 definitely my favorite. But there's loads of great ones this season. Cool. How do I can I like swipe and stuff? Yeah. I tap it. There you go. Okay. Next question, Jeremy D. Um, how many takes did the hallway fight scene take? Oh, okay, great. So we did in the morning. We did two full takes. We had like a couple of full starts, but then we did like two full takes. And the second one was really, really good. I remember that. And it was just before like the lunch break. And so there was this question of like, do we just, is that it? Have we done it? Have we got the, have we got the best take? And so everyone gathered around and we watched it and everyone was like really pleased with it. I remember we were really thrilled, but there was a couple of moments that weren't perfect, but they were pretty, it was pretty good. So we we're like, well, let's go to lunch and think about it. So everyone went to lunch. And at, at this point I was like, I think we probably, we should call it day. Like it's, we did, we had a really good take. But then they decided that we, because we had another f half day left of filming, we might as well try and do it one more time. And so we came back after lunch and um, I'd eaten too much. I remember that. And I was like, oh no, I can't be. I thought we weren't gonna have to do this again. Um, and then we had like three or four takes that we only got like halfway through or a few minutes in and then then something went wrong and i was like oh i can just see this going on all day now and it not and never being as good as the one we get before lunch and then we fight we did one more take and that was the that was like hands down the best one that was the one they used in the in the in the show and where everything just works kind of perfectly I, I still can't believe we got really lucky basically it was uh it was um it was pretty cool but uh I've been like, since we shot that, that was like about a year ago. Since we shot that, I've been so excited for the fans to see it. So it was really cool. Okay. Oh, I have a, I have an iPhone here. Uh, no, I got it. I can leave that now. Um, okay. So these are questions that would come in here. Okay. From Ted Park. When did he cure his blindness? Um, I'm gonna skip that one. <laughs> Not sure how to answer that. Okay. If you okay, this is from Leo Borg. If you weren't playing Daredevil, what Marvel character would you want to play? I don't know. There's so many good ones, you know. Um, I think it'd be fun to play uh, a villain. Um, that would be that would be a really cool experience. Um, 
I don't, but who, I don't know who that would be. And also, I, you know, also kind of attached to, um, uh, I'm attached to, um, to playing DD now. So uh, I'm not sure that, um, I'm not sure who to pick. Stilt man. That's kind of what I say. It's not funny. Um, okay. I don't understand that. That looks like someone sent a link. Hi from Istanbul, Dorian Gray. Dorian Gray! Um, will it, uh, don't, uh, David Hargreaves, will there be a season four? I'm sure I don't know. I'm not, I don't know yet. Hopefully Netflix don't cancel this show, says David. Thanks, David. Watching the last episode now. Could, no, you're not, you're watching this. <laughs> um, from Alan Spinlow. Is it wrong to be strong? <laughs> no. Um, Andrew Harris. I don't think he'll see these comments, guys. He's just reading off the ones selected from a previous post. How do you feel now, Andrea? There you go. Uh, right. Um, Joshua Gonzalez. That prison scene was better than John's. Yeah, John. John's watching this. I know for a fact. John is definitely sitting at home watching my Facebook Live. Okay, I'm gonna go back to one of these just quickly, just for fun. Norman S asks, on a scale of one to 10, how much did you enjoy working with Wilson Bethel? Does Vincent D'Onofrio scare you on set? So part one, on a scale of one to 10, how much did you, well, with one being not at all, and 10 being a lot, I'm gonna say, so I just load, what can I say? It's a loaded question. Um, I'm gonna say ten because he's awesome and he did a great job. Um, no, he's on. No, like he. That was a really, really tricky part, and it comes with so much um, comic book iconic kind of baggage. And so, for him to step into that and to and to a play bullseye so well, but also wear the DD suit so well, I was jealous. When I saw him in that suit for the first time. I was like, wow, he wears that well. His butt looks good in that, man. It's, it's tight. Um, does Vincent D'Onofrio scare you on set? Yeah, he's, he does and he doesn't. I mean, he's really lovely. He's really nice. He's a nice person. Um, but yeah, he's an imposing figure. And when he, and when he, you know, kind of embodies Wilson Fisk, that's a, that's a scary moment. Okay. Back to the phone. Uh, Leah Hutchinson, how much of your physicality as Matt is from directors and how much is it you? Oh, um, well, that's a good question. It, not from the directors, I, the, the, um, kind of figuring out how Matt moves, obviously a lot of that is dictated by, um, by his, the fact that he's visually impaired. Um, you know, the, the, a lot of those conversations I had with Jeff Loeb and Joe Quesada and Stephen DeKnight in season one, and we talked a lot about how superheroes traditionally are kind of thought of as being kind of shoulders back, standing proud, uh, kind of a, a symbol of, of strength and, and goodness and all those kind of things. Um, and with DD, with our show, you know, because because he doesn't he doesn't have kind of super strength or anything like that, and he's really just a very vulnerable man who has this these abilities. Um, you know, he he kind of he kind of needs to to hide in the shadows. Hence the reason in season one and also in season three, we we wore the the he wears the the kind of the blacks the black makeshift vigilante suit because um, it enables him to kind of like to kind of hide away. So in terms of physicality, I always thought of Matt as being someone kind of more crouched in corners, hunched over, shoulders shoulders down, head down, just trying not to be seen. Um, so that was conversations that we had at the beginning of season one um, uh, and changed a little bit in season two when he found that when he, when he embodied the, 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 um, the iconic superhero in the red Daredevil suit um, uh, and then changed again in season three. So, but great question. Okay, I'm just gonna like skip down a bunch here. You're British, wow, I couldn't tell. Laugh out loud, thank you. Um, what is, what is L, M, A, O? 
laughing my ass off. Thank you. Why? You're amazing, Charlie. Thank you for the dedication to the Daredevil. Thank you. I, I get really comfortable. I didn't. I thought it was a question. I don't like. I, I, like <laughs> it makes me uncomfortable when someone like pays me a compliment, and I shouldn't read it out loud. Um, hoping, the show, hoping the show sticks around. Me too. This is from. I don't know. I'm looking for question marks. Okay, Robbie Richard. What was your favorite moment overall from? all three seasons. Um, my favorite moment overall from all three seasons. Um, there's been a lot, so it's really hard to answer. Obviously, the hallway fight season one is a, is a great memory. The, the, the prison uh, fight that I just talked about um, is certainly up there with some of the best moments. Um, one of my favorite scenes to be part of was in season two when Matt Murdock visits, visits Wilson Fisk in prison. And um, that scene I thought was so beautifully written where he comes in and he, Matt thinks he has all the power and then he realizes that um, Vincent, or Wilson Fisk is not actually chained um, and that he and ends up kind of beating the shit out of him. Um, I, it was a great, it was a gr great pivotal scene in the season. It was a really well written scene, but also it was the first time that, that, that me and uh, and Vincent really got to work together with like a heavy dialogue scene. Because in season one, we didn't really have that much t t to do. We didn't really talk to one another much. We fought a couple of times. And there was a great, there was a great scene in episode six on the walkie talkies, but we didn't actually have any face to face kind of like scenes. And that was one of the first ones. And so it was really fun to finally kind of really sit down and work with him and spend the day with him and, and, um, and also see him kind of, you know, see how, see him kind of, in that character. Um, so that was one of my great, that was my favorite moments. Um, sorry, I'm sorry it's taking me so long. I'm trying to, Charlie, Dave Marsden. I can see what, I can see their pictures as well. That's nice. Hi, Dave. Um, Charlie, when you order Chinese, who pays for it? The guy who orders it or the guy who eats it? Why do I recognize that? That's like a thing, isn't it? Or did we, is that something in the show? Was that, did we talk about that in the show? Oh, I know what he's talking about. Do you guys know what we're talking about? That's right, you've just reminded me that I did a, sh wow, that's really impressive. I did a short film for a friend of mine years ago called H Harry Henry and the Prostitute. Um, and one, that was one of the lines. When you order a Chinese who pays for it, guy who orders it or the guy who eats it. It's a very distasteful, uh, comment actually, uh, but in the film it is. But thank you, Dave. You're, if you if you want to know what Dave's talking about, you have to go and watch Harry Henry and the Prostitute. Oh no, just nearly broke an iPad. No, I didn't. Daredevil moment there. Right. Would you ink something Daredevil related as a tribute to your role? If you would, in which place? By ink, I mean, I guess. Adam Lesnowich, I hope is how you say it. Um, if, would you ink something Daredevil related as a tribute to your role? Meaning get a tattoo? I don't think so. Maybe just a big DD right there, just in honor of the fact that we haven't had that in the show yet. Um, no, I don't think so. Explaining that to the grandkids would be interesting. Um, I'm sorry, I'm trying to find a question. How is your American accent? Oh, that's a compliment, not reading that. <laughs> um, someone ask a question. Someone ask a question. <laughs> right, who's, okay. Uh, I'm not gonna comment on that. Okay, I'm gonna go back down here quickly because uh, so I can get a question out. Here we go. Roberto V, how hard was it on your voice with all the screaming and yelling at the end of the fight with Kingpin versus Bullseye versus Daredevil? Okay. Yes, that's a yeah, yeah that's, a, that's good. You may notice that. So, um, 
when we were filming that final fight scene, as you as you probably if you've seen it, you'll know there was a lot going on and the schedule was really tight and we were coming to the end of the show and there was a moment where we didn't think we were gonna complete the scene in time. And we might have to kind of come back another day, like add a day to the schedule, which is a, obviously it's a huge, um, that comes at like huge expense and it's like trying to organize everything and everyone last minute to come back the next day when like people weren't gonna be there. I remember a Yellet was gonna, we already had a flight booked back to Los Angeles or something like that. So we weren't gonna make it and we were doing the fight. And when, 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 when you do a fight sequence, you, um, in order to kind of help sell the fight, the, 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 the each punch and kick, et cetera, you, ha you have to kind of vocalize it. You have to kind of, like, I find at least, it kind of comes out of your voice as well. Um, and so while I was doing those, that, that, while Matt is beating down on Vincent and Wilson at the end, Wilson Fisk, um, I started to lose my voice. And then I discovered that we, we'd actually picked up, made up some time and we were going to do the final conversation. We were going to finish that that day. And I now started to lose my voice. And I was like, oh my God, how am I going to do this? So I remember being like really worried that my voice wasn't going to hold up, hold up in, that, in, that, in that final moment with Wilson Fisk. Um, uh, and uh, I think, it's, and so I haven't actually seen it yet. So I don't know how obvious it is in the, in the show, but um, uh, yeah, it was, I could, you could really hear that my voice was going, but... Um, we did manage to power through and get it, but it was, um, it's, it's tricky. That's, that's like something you don't think about. One of the things you, you forget that you have to kind of, um, you have to consider is that, you know, when you, when you're doing, when you're doing scenes where you shout a lot or you fight a lot, or you, you're like screaming or whatever, you, you really can't do that all day because you'll lose your voice. You have to kind of like, <clears throat> you have to kind of pace yourself vocally. Okay. I got one more. Um, okay, I'm gonna find a good one. Oh, there's a lot. There's lots. I thought there was like six. This is like you can keep scrolling down. <laughs> Are you? I'm just gonna I'll read this one. Shannon Wagner. Are you aware that you are almost as hot as Vincent D'Onofrio? I'm aware of that. <laughs> almost. Um. Okay. Just for the for the reference, there's a lot of question statements here saying please don't let Netflix cancel um, uh, cancel Daredevil. So just just put that out there. I won't. I won't let them do that. <laughs> hmm. Okay. I'm okay, kind one more. I'm looking for really good ones. I'm sorry, guys. Bear with me. <laughs> Here you go. From Conrad. Is that Conrad? Oh, you can't zoom in. Right. From, from Conrad Mosa. Um, Charlie, can you do me a favor and say bubbling candle? Bubbling candle. That's a Stardust reference, by the way. Oh, this guy's not, that's a picture of me. That guy's got a picture of me as a picture of him. Emil. That's cool. Um, and there's a cat. Oh, so it doesn't have to be the, oh, I'm such a loser. I don't know what. Okay. Oh, you, you say last one. Okay, I got one more. I'm going to find one more. Come on. Oh, here you go. Okay, what shows do you enjoy watching when you're not filming? From Ian McCleary. Um, okay, so shows that I've recently watched, I really liked, I really, I really liked uh, Wild Wild Country on Netflix, um, documentary series. Um, I'm, I really like the um, All or Nothing, um, I really like sports shows. So I'm watching all of the All or Nothing on Amazon Prime, uh, Manchester City documentary, uh, the da Dallas Cowboy one, the All Blacks, that's really cool. Um, what else did I really like? I love The Leftovers. It's one of my favorite shows of all time. Um, and um, 
I'm I'm a big Friends fan, so if it's like if I want to watch something really easy and fun, I'll I'll go back to Friends. I think that's it. That was my last question, right? Thanks, guys. Thanks for having me.